係身邊係唔係？其實我心裏邊好想相信，世人係魔鬼。Hi, welcome to the Silver Spleen. My name is Lawrence Meadows, and this is my review of Port of Call. Port of Call is based on a true story from 2008. A 16-year-old prostitute was murdered and dismembered. Her body parts were dumped in the sea, flushed down a toilet, and left at a wet market. Aaron Kwok plays Detective Chong, an older, eccentric policeman who becomes very involved with the case, which is a nice way of saying he becomes obsessed. But Port of Call isn't a police procedural movie. Though it does have Maggie Shu playing a police officer, it's not a mystery either. We learn all the details of the crime and of the people involved very early on in the movie. There's no narrative tension about discovering, arresting, or convicting the killer. All of these things happen in very matter-of-fact ways, but the movie seems to tell the story more than once. It's as if M. C. Escher designed the narrative path of the film. Imagine a highway cloverleaf that's more like an infinity symbol. No matter how far you go, or how fast, or how many times, you always end up in the same place. To be honest, by the end of the movie, I was very glad that I was watching the 98-minute version instead of the 120-minute director's cut. I didn't really understand why the story needed to be so exhaustively told, and like I said, after a while, it started to annoy me. Not just the retelling either. To me, it seemed like there was an implied sense of Reaching for gravitas that the film or the characters or the situations actually prevented. There's nothing grandiose or lofty about the things that happen or the people that they happen to in this movie. But I got the impression that the movie wants us to think that there is. You know, if you're trying to make a movie about extraordinary themes, these people are just too ordinary. They're too dull and they're too real. It's not a revelation that dumb people make dumb choices with bad consequences. Now maybe I'm just too old or too callous to care, but I felt like it was impossible to make these people and their struggles seem bigger or more important than they are because they were just fairly pedestrian. All the long, slow shots with violin music in the background didn't help either. Nor did having chapter titles or an unnecessary and under-examined pro-life subtext involving a bad prosthetic. But I wouldn't feel right saying that Port of Call is a bad movie, 'cause it's not. Instead, I think it's more of a character study. Because even though the narrative often seems to be adrift, the acting in the film makes it very much worth seeing. For a change, we get to know almost all the characters in a movie. Patrick Tam, as Aaron Kwok's partner, is as usual very funny and very entertaining. I wish his role was bigger, just because of the energy that he brought to the scene. Jessie Lee plays the young prostitute, and she plays that role remarkably well, conveying not only the confusion that her character feels mentally and emotionally, but also that weird and dangerous mix of naivete and hubris that young people have that gets them into trouble so often. She ends up topless in this movie more than once, and for her own sake, I hope she doesn't end up being pigeonholed or having her career hindered for doing it, 'cause it's not fair. Elaine Jin plays her mother, a single mom with too much weight on her shoulders. And not enough money, education, or energy to handle it. It's not easy to play an essentially bad person who can nevertheless elicit sympathy. But Elaine Jin does, and it's a very powerful performance. Stage actor Michael Ning plays Ting, the murderer. If there's only one reason to watch Port of Call, his performance is it. You'll have to see it to know what I mean. But I thought he was really, really impressive. But what about Aaron Kwok? You may be asking. The character of Detective Chong, as well as Aaron's performance, are both rather subdued, which is nice because Aaron Kwok can be prone to overacting, from what I've read. And don't get me wrong, he has what may very likely be a contractually stipulated crying scene. But overall, I was pleasantly surprised with the restraint that he showed. The cinematography for Port of Call was done by Christopher Doyle, and as long as we're talking about restraint, he didn't use his signature lush, colorful approach. In fact, much of Port of Call is as washed out and grimy as his liver. But it works to complement the tone of the film, and his skillful approach to the scenes depicting the dismemberment not only capture the mood but also help to overcome what are probably some significant budget constraints. It was good that we often see the most explicit things only for a moment, because the longer you see those things, the less effective and more artificial they immediately become. Kind of like my reviews. Port of Call is a very interesting movie, even if it's not always entertaining. It's the kind of movie that I can say I appreciate and I respect, but I don't necessarily like. I'm actually tempted to watch the longer 120-minute version, 
just to see what I missed because maybe it makes the story better. I'd suggest that you watch this movie for yourself and make up your own mind. Port of Call is currently playing in cinemas in either of those two versions, so you can take your choice. If you don't see it in the cinema, wait till it's available for rental or purchase. Don't steal the movie. When it gets released to home video, I'll update the description with a link where you could buy it. If you enjoyed my review, please tell me. If you didn't enjoy it, tell me. If you enjoy the channel, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Hi, welcome to the Silver Spleen. My name is Lawrence Meadows, and this is the third fucking time I've had to do this video.